Welcome back to the OCON Open Wide Group uh, Conference. I'm here today with Nick Poole from the Collection Trust, who is going to talk to us about uh, the very technical and problematic uh, issue of archiving internet and open data. Nick, you just talked for an hour uh, with your colleague, uh, colleague uh, Ben White from British, British Library about how can we do this. Uh, how do you feel uh, this problem is uh, being uh, uh, accepted in society. Is it something you have to explain uh, what sure. it's about? <laughs> and then maybe you can tell us what it's about. <laughs> I will do. Uh, maybe I'll start by saying what the problem is. Um, essentially, we've got a, an industry that was created in the Victorian era 100, 150 years ago. And it's about bricks and it's about places and it's about objects and it's about that really rich experience. And we as a generation have to translate that into the digital age. So we have this immense challenge. It's like the challenge of building roads or universities or railways. It's a huge infrastructural problem and it's completely invisible to the public. As far as the public see, museums and libraries are there on the high street, they're being funded, they should be digital, they should be digitally available. And so there's this gap between the public expectation and the money, and the money's just not there. So it's a paywall money. How, we, how, we, how do we fund uh, this huge uh, data? Uh, so what are the, the few uh, paths, the few leads uh, available right now, or you think are going to be available soon? Well, I think there's a couple of really interesting options. I mean, one is if the, the government steps in and invests, which is looking kind of unlikely right now. Uh, another is to think about crowdsourcing, is to think about what can citizens do. You know, you've got people walking around with five or six megapixel cameras on their mobile phone. How can they help digitize culture and get it online? Uh, but also, increasingly, this is a problem that's getting interesting to large uh, technical organizations. People like Google, the BBC, uh, are getting into the picture and saying, we can help uh, sort out the infrastructure. What we need to do is then push the knowledge about the, uh, the, the cultural material uh, into those platforms so that people can enjoy them online. Sounds, sounds, sounds great. So one other issue with data is privacy. Because we uh, are interested in all this, uh, we want access to that. But at the same time, isn't this uh, an invasion uh, somehow? How do we control uh, all data over there? How can we control issues of privacy? Um, I think it's a really interesting question about the relationship between a citizen and the state. And there's always a transaction, there's always a, a contract uh, between the two. Right now, people are being asked to surrender a lot of their privacy uh, in return for public services like access to libraries, like access to archives uh, and to museums. I think the, the question is, where do we draw the line? Where do we create a balance that says, you're going to have to tell us something about you so we can personalize services, build this digital world around you but we don't want to invade your idea of us not using your information, not constructing services that do things that you don't expect to do. Trust is pretty much the most important thing to museums, libraries and archives. That's what we're there for. People trust us. And so what I think we can do is be trusted intermediaries between the citizen and the state. We can archive their digital output, but we can do it in a way that means that they can trust us because this is a civic duty. This is a public role that we're playing. Okay, so trust uh, is also uh, a very uh, big debate on open data, not only, not only open data, but open source uh, users talking to each other and build, building uh, projects. So trust networks, so people have to trust an institution like the British Library or the Collection Trust, uh, but I would say that from the past experience, they are maybe, because maybe they don't know enough, or because they had bad experiences, they might be uh, a bit cautious, suspicious about this. So what kind of strategy, uh, what kind of uh, trust network we can create to go around that? Uh, I think it's one of the problems where there's never going to be a perfect solution, so let's accept that we're not going to get it entirely right. This is about how you behave. This is about, uh, you know, it's, it's no good saying you can trust me one day and then the next day taking somebody's data and selling it. This is about a long-term integrity of those services. And that's what worries me about the commercial principle. If we go into a world where we have to fund archiving commercially, people are going to make financial decisions about how that data gets used. This is 
meant to be a public good. This is like running railways. This is people being able to use the infrastructure to improve their quality of life. And so if we push the entire culture sector into being a commercial model, then we no longer have the public basis of funding, the taxpayer-funded model, which is the basis of that trust. But ultimately, the only way to build a trust network is to be trustworthy. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, Nick. So what's the website so we can learn more about this project? Brilliant. I really hope people do. It's uh, collectionslink, www.collectionslink.org.uk, and we hope to see you there. Fantastic. Thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, this was Nick Poole for the, from the Collection Trust. Uh, more videos coming soon about uh, Orcon. Uh, see you in a bit.